Hello guys, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. So, it's been a crazy few days around here um, between the Moby Dick incident, between the incident with Caitlin and the Har 68 pretty much completely being grenaded. I mean, there's metal all throughout that thing. It is just not good. Um, I don't even know that that thing is really good for much more than like a core for just the case because I think all the other parts are probably just trashed. Um, anyhow guys, also we got our 84, our little project truck, our standard cab short bed, um, which I'm excited about. I hope you guys are too. But anyway, before all, you know, everything kind of went to, to crap, uh, we were working on our four link project on our fourth gen drag truck. So. If you guys remember, we took our leaf springs off. We cut all the bracketry off of the frame. We have like a full floating rear frame. We cleaned our axle all up, um, got everything off of that and prepped it for the four link. Um, everything's good there. We got all of our parts thrown out here on the table. Um, our bolts did come in from the guys at Firepunk and also our bearings for our um, anti-roll bar. So we're going to start with this project tonight. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take us. We're going to certainly take our time and make sure that all of our measurements are right, that everything's square and true. We're going to tack stuff, double, triple check, and just make sure everything is right. So our first step in this process is our actual axle bar or axle brackets for um, well, for the axle. So as you can see here, I cut them in half. Um, they come from fire pump as one piece. Um, so I just cut them in a bandsaw. The reason they come in one piece is, well, what I think is the reason is because if you fully strip down the axles, like you got a fresh axle, um, you can put these on. You don't have to weld them, but basically it just makes it possible for any kind of circumstance that you would be able to use the bracket not really a big deal to cut them in half but we'll get them tacked on uh tacked together on the axle kind of like i have this one mocked up here with my clamps a little bit of a pain by yourself but not a big deal so we'll get those all tacked in and make sure i got them facing the right way of course then we'll roll our axle under the frame get it centered and try and start working on the rest of it um like i said this is the first time i've done this so you know we might have to do stuff a couple times because we didn't do it right or whatever like you know just out of order kind of stuff i guess is what i'm trying to say is we're just going to take it slow and we're going to get this thing in it might take us a couple nights but in the end we will have our own four length that we did in the garage like everything else on the truck so let's get to tacking these things on there First off, we got our um, four length brackets on our axle. They're all tacked on there. So we have you know a full bracket again. Um, also on the axle, I had to do a little cleanup because where we had cut our bracketry off, we had some like nicks in the axle tube and places where I cut a little too deep. So I had to weld that up and grind it smooth. I didn't realize that I forgot to do that until I got the axle in here. Um, so we had to do that in here. Not that that was big, that big a deal, but it would have been a little nicer to do it out here. Um, the axle is sitting where it needs to sit. It's exactly where it was. I was using a plumb bob 
to our center line marks to get that i was measuring to the cab to the back of the frame set the frame up so it's level again since you know we had to pick it up it's level it's sitting where it should be um so this is kind of how it's going to sit as you can see i also put the dry shaft in to try and figure out a pinion angle so the pinion's sitting about uh five degrees and when you put the angle finder on the drive shaft i think it's at like seven so i, I believe that means that we have a pinion angle of like two degrees um low so that you know when you know you guys pr probably know with traction bars you know with a normal leaf spring setup if you don't have traction bars it tends to try and you know push the the uh, pinion up it's going to do the same with this but with the four link it should be much more rigid so you still want it down lower and from what i read a two degree pinion angle is pretty much where you want it to be um, with a four link but the beauty of the four link is we can adjust it so as you guys can see, I started mocking it up over here. Um, just kind of set our tube, set our hind joints right in the middle. Um, so that way we have you know uh, plenty of adjustment either way, but that's the thing. We can set our pinion angle. We can you know drive one wheel back further if we need to, to put some rear steer in it, whatever we need to do. But I got our brackets on. Um, this is something I have to make a decision of because as you can see they sit fairly low this is with the bottom of this bracket pretty much even with the bottom of the bracket on the axle and it, as you guys can see it's like really low it's like uh six and a half inches off the ground um so i don't know if we want to kind of raise it up so it's in the center of the frame here i haven't decided yet i got to look into it because i believe you want this pretty much even with the one in the rear to give you the most adjustment possible. So that's kind of where we're gonna call it for right tonight. We'll pick this up tomorrow. It's late, it's a school night, and I gotta do a little bit more research because I'm not sure I really care for how low that's sitting. So guys, it's the following night. Um, we're picking back up with our four link fabrication, you know, just kind of getting this thing started. So I was looking online today and the guys from Firepunk have a video, I believe it's a uh, four link kit and uh, vibrant clamps or something like that. And Lynn over at Firepunk talks about the four link setup and how he sets them up. So what he says they do is they get the pinion where they want it, which we already have. And then they set the, their axle brackets to that, making them perfectly up and down. The bottom of the bracket is actually flat. Um, so we can go, you know, get a zero angle on that and then tack them in place. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set it an inch and a half off the frame. Um, just for simplicity, I can just take my square here, put it on there, and I can get it, get it right. So then both of our um, clamps will be in the same spot on either side. Just kind of going for simplicity. I was going to put it like halfway between that and the wheel, but... I think that's easy enough. Why overcomplicate it? That and that will also keep this to a stubby piece of tube, even though we we're probably gonna gusset that anyway, that just will make that a little bit more rigid. So we're gonna do that. We kind of got a little ahead of ourselves here, but the thing I was concerned about last night was just how low this is to the ground. But we're not gonna worry ourselves with that right yet. Um, another thing Lynn had said was the bracket in the back and the bracket in the front, he likes, you know, to get the maximum amount of adjustment, you make those two even with each other. So that's the decision we need to make, and I haven't made it yet. So what we're gonna do to continue on with this, we're gonna do exactly kind of how he said. We're gonna unbolt this. We're gonna bolt our um, uh, heim joints in place on that, and we'll get everything tacked in place. Um, like I said, inch and a half off, we'll get it level, square, and all that, and then we'll do the other one. Then we'll know the distance we'll need here for, for these, and we'll also figure out our height and all that. I just worry that that's just a little too low by looking at it, but we'll see. So anyhow, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get these things all tacked up in place. What I'll probably do is actually take a bunch of the hind joints, even though I spent a bunch of time getting everything you know, bolted up or, I got all of our four link bars even, but I'll probably undo uh, like two more of them just to put in there, just so I know that that bracket is true and we'll still be able to adjust everything. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get those tacked in place 
and kind of move forward from there and keep this project rolling. So both uh, axle brackets are tacked in well. This one is tacked in. This one is fully seal welded all the way around. I'm just going to let it cool for a little bit with the Himes in it. So that way I know the spacing's proper. I don't want to get getting all funky as it cools. But yeah, everything turned out well there. I was going to roll the axle around, but welding it was fairly simple. So yeah, um, we're looking good there. Um, I debated about putting a little weld in here, and I still might. Um, I got those nice fear cups, but it's probably not necessary at all. Um, we do got a little smoky smoke coming from the uh, rear end, but uh, it's just residual oil burning off, I'm sure, in the axle tube. But I took the diff cover off just to make sure. Um, but yeah, everything's lined up. It did take me longer than it should have because when we first started, I had that other bracket and the four link bars attached over here. And I figured that would work. And, well, I tacked it all up and then I got looking at it and it was definitely like a skew. So I ended up cutting the tacks off, sliding the bracket out of the way, grinding everything up, putting it back and, you know, redoing it. So, you know, just trying to get everything right. I did kind of screw that up, but we fixed it. Once this cools down, we'll get this all welded and see what else we can get done tonight. That might be it. Maybe we'll mock up the rest of it, but yeah, this is a big step. Um, like I said before, we're just going to kind of take this slow, make sure we get it right. That right there, that little screw up proves or shows you that I just need to take a step back and make sure it's right before I keep tacking. So I tack and then make sure it was right, tack it, so on and so forth. So like I said, we'll let that cool down and we'll get the weld on this side. So guys, our axle prep is done. We have our brackets all installed. I actually threw a little extra weld on the inside here, um, just on the back side here, about two inches um, on either plate. Just a little extra weld, figure why not? We have those awesome Fjord cups um, that let you get a lot of stick out. So when you're TIG welding, you can get way deep in there. Um, definitely recommend these. Saw them on, uh, on the Instagram. I figured I'd give them a shot and they were great. They're one of those things that made the whole cage project possible. So anyway, we got our brackets installed. As you can see, I'm starting to kind of mock up our four link and that's where I kind of hit a pause type situation. So if we look at the driver's side over here, I just placed the bars in like kind of random holes. Uh, so if I put this bar in the bottom hole on either bracket, this angle gauge reads about zero. It's like, you know, 0.2 degrees off or something like that. So anyhow, what I know Lynn had recommended in the fire pump video is have the bottom of this bracket even with the bottom of that bracket. Now that's all well and good, but looking at it, right there, we're actually two inches higher um, we'd have to lower, take this two by four out and lower it back down. And then we would be even with the other bracket. And 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, and let me reiterate that. Like when I got the zero measurement on the angle finder, the bar was in both bottom holes and that two by four was out. I was just mocking this up to put the bar in the middle of the frame. So I'm trying to decide whether it's worth having two inches less clearance for getting on the trailer. Eventually we're gonna dyno the truck somewhere, you know, do dyno events or something. You know, do we want two more inches of clearance or do we want more adjustability in our four length? Right now I'm leaning towards putting this bar in the center of the frame and losing a little bit of adjustability to get that extra clearance because it just seems so low. Now, these 245 70 17 tires that are on the truck right now is not what we're gonna run for, well, anything. But just looking at it, and maybe I need to factor that in too, is what tire size would we possibly be running? I honestly don't even know what this size is. Um, According to Mr. Tape Measure, it's about a 30 inch tire. So it's actually pretty close to anything we're gonna be running, the radials. I think they come out to a 28 or a 29 inch tall tire. So anyway, this is probably close to what we'll run for anything. So definitely leaning towards having the four link up a little bit and just putting it in the center of the frame. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. That's kind of where I'm at. Like I said, it's just, it's awful low. Um, if we we're strictly going to be drag racing the truck, I guess it wouldn't be that it, big of an issue. And I'm not saying we're not mostly going to drag race it, but hey, you know, there's mobile dinos you got to get up on, stuff like that. My trailer, what if we got to use another trailer? Maybe I'm just overthinking it and having it two inches lower so it's even with the bracket on the axles. It'll never be a problem. I don't know. It's just one of those things. The truck's apart. We're going to do this, but once we get that installed, we're going to brace it and do all kinds of other stuff. So I want to do it right the first time. So we might take a little breather from this until I can figure out what exactly I want to do. Like I said, put something down in the comments. If you've done this or you have this done in your truck, let me know about your experience. I, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Um, I'm just, like I said, trying to do this right the first time. Like I said, that axle bracket, I got a little ahead of myself and I stepped back and said, you know, let's take the time, make it right. That way we don't, you know, go back later and say, man, we screwed this up or man, we got to cut this out and redo it. So anyway, guys, we started our four link fabrication. It's coming along nicely. Like I said, we're going to go slow and steady and make sure it's right. So anyway, guys, I oh, and then one other thing, another thing I got to figure out and maybe you guys can help me is with setting our bars. I had set these so that they were right in the middle of the threads on the hind joints, just so I figured, hey, we're right in the middle starting off. We got, uh, you know, even adjustability back and forth. But when I put the bars in the holes that they're in now, I had to unscrew this one a pretty good ways just to get this straight and, you know, perpendicular to, to the bars. So I don't know if I should you know probably cheat them up a little bit and move this bracket a little further back let me know what you guys think if you guys have done anything with one of these four link kits or whatever let me know how you did it um just trying to figure it all out you know it's it, it's one of those things it doesn't come with instructions because every every scenario is going to be completely different so anyway guys I'm rambling a little bit here at the end, but if you guys can help me with any of those two issues, let me know. So anyway, like I said, I'm gonna take a little breather from this, get some clarification, try and figure out exactly what I wanna do, and then we'll proceed forward. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage, get the wrench on your truck.